Hi everyone, this is Germinal Van, and today I want to talk to you guys about the application of differential equations in economic analysis. So as I said last time when I made a video about uh, integral calculus in economic analysis, differential equations are basically a continuation of integral calculus. And as I said, you cannot do integral calculus if you don't know differential calculus, so anything that is with derivatives. But uh, the reason why I decided to make this video is because differential equations are very, very important in economics. As a matter of fact, most of the economic models that economists develop over time are all based on differential equations. So here I explain basically why we need it. So differential equations in economics are used extensively. I'm going to underline it here extensively to model dynamics so basically it means that it deals with growth and change right so differential equations basically enable economists to measure the rate of change in the economy so people use differential equations so economists use differential equations to measure for instance the the, the gdp of a country or they even use differential equations to analyze financial market, like the Black-Scholes model. So for example, economists uh, will measure the average change in income relative to a single year's increase in education or experience. So as you see, like, if you, if for instance, an economist has noticed that the, the salary or the wage of workers has increased, let's say from 2019 to 2020, so they're going to see what are the factors that contributed to this increase so they're going to look at for instance the, the increase in education or the increase in work experience of those workers from 2019 to 2020 so they're going to develop a differential equation to do that so basically differential equations are used to study how system evolves with respect to time that being said the typical formula of a differential equation, I'm going to write a very simple differential equation. So it is this, dy over dx equals fx, okay? So it is different because normally the derivative will be this, right? It will be dy over dx equals f prime of x. That would be the derivative, but here, you see that dy over dx equals at, equals fx. So the point is that the result of a differential equation is to obtain the function, the initial function. And that being said, in order to obtain the initial function, you have to apply the antiderivative. And the antiderivative means to integrate. All right? So I wrote here basically two very famous models in economic. Oh, let me put it here some economic models based on differential equations. So the first model is the harrod demar growth model. So this model basically explains economic growth in terms of level of savings, productivity, and capital. So I wrote here what it means. So this is the equation, it's a differential equation. So the y dot over y is basically the output growth rate. The s here is savings rate. The C is the marginal product of capital, and delta is the depreciation rate. And a very, very famous uh, economic model that is even used up to today is the Solo Swan model. So the Solo Swan model was, in fact, created by Robert Solo and uh, this, uh, this Australian economist. Uh, I forgot his first name, but his last name is Swan. And they, they created this model, but they did it independently. And th the funny thing is that uh Robert Solo in in fact became known for this model because he was the first to submit his paper to the Quarterly Journal of Economics and because he submitted before uh Swan and that's the reason why he won the Nobel Prize in 1987 otherwise they both deserve to win the Nobel Prize at the same time but anyway so the Solo Swan model explains the long-run economic growth by considering capital uh, uh, accumulation, population growth, and technological progress. So this is the solo swan model. It's quite complicated, but uh, the K basically is the capital stock, 
delta is let me put it here delta is elasticity with respect to capital and then so the s time uh capitals uh, capital time t power delta is basically actual investment minus n plus g plus delta uh times capital t so this is the break even investment all right there's a third model that i want to show you there's no space here so i'm going to erase this and it's very famous uh it is the malthusian growth model and it's a very simple model so i will show you guys how to solve the differential equations for that So I'm going to put here three. It's called the Mal, oops, Malthusian growth model. So you guys are famous with Robert Thomas Robert Malthus, who uh, developed the first mathematical model about exponential growth. So the mathematical model of exponential growth could be written as the following, right? It is dp over dt equals rp. All right, so as we know, so p, it's population size, size, sorry. R here is population growth rate and then t is time of course don't forget that differential equations attempt to uh, solve how system evolves with respect to time so how are we going to solve this differential equation so as we could see this is one of the most simple the most simple differential equations you could see. So here, what we're gonna do is that we're going to apply the separable variables method of differential equations. So to do that, the first thing we're gonna do, okay, the first thing we're gonna do is to, uh, is to get rid of the, de of the denominator. Okay, so get rid of dt normally it could be dx but here we're using dt so get rid of dt so how are we going to get rid of dt actually let me write it a little wider get rid of dt so how are we going to get rid of dt we're simply going to multiply dt on both sides so it's going to give us dt times dp over dt equals rp times dt and i forgot to mention to emphasize that the population growth rate in fact is a constant okay and here what we're using there's no initial condition okay there's no initial condition here i can add in an, an initial condition after but here there's no initial condition i just want to walk you guys through the steps of how to, how to solve this differential equation so basically how to calculate the exponential growth when you're dealing with population analysis so to do this so is basically what it's going to give you is going to cancel this so it's going to give you dp equals rp dt so number two, what you're going to do, now you're going to separate P for, from DT because we're using the separable uh, differential equation method. So separate P from DT. So how are you going to separate P from DT? You're simply going to divide on both sides. RP D 
DTTP. So what is it going to give you? So it's going to give you one over P times DP equals R DT. Now we've done that, we, we were able to separate P from DT. Okay, so now we're going, number three, we're going to integrate this. Number three, we're going to integrate both sides. Okay, how are we going to integrate this? So we simply do this, integral of one over P dp equals integral of r dt we're simply going to apply the antiderivative method so the antiderivative of one over p will be ln p we can say the plus c but there's no it's better to to write the plus c only in one side rather than the two sides so ln p equals r the antiderivative of dt is t. So r t plus c. And now the fourth part, what we're going to do is we're going to isolate p. Because we're looking to write p as a function. So we're going to isolate p. What is it going to give us? We isolate p. In order to isolate P, we're going to raise this to the exponential. So it's going to give you, so let me rewrite it here again. So ln P equals RT plus C. So raise this to the exponential is going to give you exponential of ln P equals exponential of RT plus C. And of course, the natural, the base of the natural log is E. So I can put it here. The base of the natural log is e so both will so both will naturally cancel so it's going to give you p equals e exponential of rt plus c so this is the general solution to the differential equation but basically there is no uh condition there is no initial condition so let me write it here. Solution with no initial condition. So that's the answer. Now if we want if we want to add an initial condition, if we want to say that at p equals zero, so it's going to give you uh, so let me do it here so you will see so now we say let's add let us add an initial condition so if we say for instance p of zero so you're going to replace so the constant so p equals zero so is going to be t it's going to be exponential of r zero plus c so p of zero is going to give you we know that the so r times zero is zero so it's going to be e of zero plus c we know that the exponential of zero is one so p of zero is going to be one plus c then move the one one plus c so move the one on the other side it's going to going to be c so basically it is its own constant so p times zero it is its own constant so it's it's one plus c you move the one on the other side it's going to give you minus uh minus one equals c so it is its own constant so that's basically how you will solve the Malthusian growth model. But the initial condition, if you do not have, if you do not have an initial condition, the, the general solution to the differential equation is this. So let me put it here, general solution.
All right. So I hope you guys saw a little bit how we solve, um, how we use differential equations in economics. But as I said, in order to know how to use differential equations in economics, one of the very first thing you must know is to work on differential calculus because differential calculus will help you uh, apply integral calculus. You cannot do integral calculus without differential calculus and you cannot do differential equations without integral calculus. So I hope this video helped you and I hope you can start uh, getting accustomed to a little bit of calculus when you're learning mathematical economics. So thank you guys and see you guys next time.